so I gotta since you since you mentioned the haircut, I gotta tell you how I got the haircut. The socks, <laughs> Target, <laughs> Target. Um, so on uh, Thursday, I think it was Thursday, Thursday or Friday. I think I was uh, Friday. I uh, like go into the bathroom and I see that my sideburns are kind of like like nasty and bushy and everything. And I'm like, I should probably trim them because you know Sunday's church. I gotta look presentable. So I get my trusty little you know hair trimmer, beard trimmer that I usually use, and I usually put it on the max setting, like for, like long, the max long setting. And uh, I put it on the max setting, but I put it on the max short setting. And I put it up, and I'm like, zoop, <laughs> up into the hair. I'm like, oh my god, <laughs> what did I do? I'm like, I can fix it. I can't fix it. So then I, I had to chop it all off. So that's, that's how I got the haircut. Um, so how has the series been going, The Fruits of the Spirit? That's an awesome series to be going through. Um, like, how have you guys liked it? And I was, I was thinking, like what, like, what fruit do you guys, like, think that you're strong in? Like, you, like, like you, you have this fruit. This, this is something that, like, you're strong in. Or maybe something that like you used to suck at, like you were really weak in, but you've like you've seen how God has changed you, like worked in you, and now this this area that you were weak in before, now you're actually strong in. Does anybody wanna share? But the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. Goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Yeah, Katie. Peace? Okay. Is that something that's always kind of come naturally to you, or is that something that, no? I remember talking to you at the back of the church one time <laughs> when you were a little bit anxious about some stuff, right? That's awesome, though, that God's been working on that in you. Did I see another hand up? Yeah. Patience. Well, then come up here and teach us because uh, tonight is all about patience. That's good. So, again, is that something that, like, you've seen kind of developing in you, like growing stronger? Yeah? Awesome. Joy? There you go. That's one that I struggle in, so. Faithfulness? Yep. Awesome. Like, does anybody, like, want to share, like, where you guys... I don't know, like struggling with, you know, this, this, this fruit, like you saw the need for it in your life and like you, you prayed to God or you did something, you made some changes in your life that led you to now be strong in this area or like how, how did that come about? It's usually what it takes, right? Especially with patience, right? Like when you ask God, Lord, teach me to be patient. Ooh. <laughs> Man, the stuff you have to go through. Okay, well, um, yeah, I would love to hear your thoughts. Uh, even if you guys want to stop me as I'm speaking and you guys want to chime in, you have like a story or an example like about what I'm talking about. That's usually how I do, like, like when I teach at youth, that's, that's usually how I love to do it because I love to hear your guys' input. Um, but, like, there's two ways that we could do this, right? Like, we could pick, like, one or two or three verses, and we could really dive deep into that. Or we could do something really high level. Um, and I've never done that before. Like, I usually go with a two or three verses. But tonight, I want to do... I want to do the high-level version. I, I, I went through the Bible, and, and I tried to find every single verse, every single passage that speaks about patience. And I want to go over that with you guys tonight. So there's just 87 verses that we have to get through, which is a good thing because we're studying patience, so it's going to require a lot of... No, I'm kidding. There's eight, 18 or 17 verses that we're going to go through. So not that, it's, it's more than normal, but it's, it's not that bad. Um, so I, I took all the verses that I found that speak about patience, and I divided them into kind of like three categories. 
Um, the first category speak about God, like in relationship to patience. The second talks about like our, our, our character, patience as it relates to us. And then the third one is patience as it relates to ministry, okay? So that's what we're going to be going through. But uh, if you guys have ever studied theology, you know, like you, you guys do like survey classes, right? Like survey of the Old Testament, survey of the New Testament. I don't know if that happens in other subjects too. But it's kind of like a high-level view of the topic that you're discussing. So you don't go into like a lot of, a lot of depth, but you cover a lot of territory. And that's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to be flying through these 18 verses, uh, and we're going to be talking about what they mean and how, to, how they apply to us. But again, if you guys want to jump in, stop me, add your own experience to what we're talking about, that's perfectly fine. So, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, and patience, okay? Patience is what we're going to be talking about. And... For the first part, like I said, we're going to be going over the verses that speak about God or how this relates to God and his character. The first one that we find is Isaiah chapter 7, verse 13, where it says, Isaiah said, listen, house of David. Is it not enough for you to try the patience of men, right? Like you're like you've you've had dealings with people where you're like, man, you're just really trying my patience, right? <laughs> like, I'm about, I'm about to lose it, right? Like, somebody's just getting on your nerves. Somebody's just annoying you. Somebody's just doing something that, like, you're just like, stop. Um, he says, is it not enough that for you to try the patience of men? Will you also try the patience of my God? And the first thing that we see is that God's patience can run out, all right? Like, God's, I don't know if, you know, because most of the time, like, we're, we're, we're told that, you know, God is love, and God is good, and God is gracious, and, and, and you know, you can, you can repent on your deathbed if you want, and, like, all these things. But the reality is that God's patience can run out on us, okay? The, the example that I think of is Pharaoh. Uh, I don't know if you guys remember when he sends, when God sends Moses to Pharaoh, and he's like, go to Pharaoh and tell him, let my people go. And, you know, he doesn't, so God sends ten plagues. So Moses goes to him ten times, right? And, and the first couple times, like if you read those passages, he, it says that Moses went and he said, hey, God says, let my people go. And uh, it says in, in, in there that Pharaoh hardened his heart, and he wouldn't let the people go, right? And the next time Moses goes like, let my people go. And it says, Pharaoh hardened his heart. Didn't let the people go. And the third time and the fourth time. And, it, and this repeats, right? The interesting thing, again, there's, there's 10 of these meetings. There's 10 plagues that result. The interesting thing for me is that, it, it, like you get to like the fifth plague or the fifth time that Moses goes up to him and he says, you know, God sent me again. And he tells you, let my people go. And it says, What? Pharaoh hardened his heart? No, it says, and God hardened Pharaoh's heart. Now, for me, maybe that's just like a throwaway verse, but for me, that is terrifying in, in some ways, right? Because what it tells me is that God can speak to me, and God can speak to you, and I can harden my heart to what God is telling me over and over and over again, especially with the thought of like, I have time, right? Like I'll, I'll listen to God when I want to listen to God, you know? I'll give my life to God when I want to give, when I'm ready to give my life to God, right? Like I, I, I want to, you know, I, I, I want to enjoy my youth, you know? I, I want to I wanna do the things I want to do. I want to do the things that like, you know, people my age do, like maybe party or drink or have certain kinds of relationships. And, and the thing is, we don't know when that cutoff is for us. And it's different for, for everybody, right? Like, God doesn't treat me the way he treated Pharaoh. God doesn't treat you the way he's going to treat. Each person has an individual relationship with God. And the thing is, if we keep continuously hardening our heart towards God when he speaks towards us, what we learn from Scripture is that God's patience can, it is possible that God's patience can run out. So let's be careful, right? Let's be careful when we hear the voice of God speaking to us. 
listen, obey, go do what God is telling you to do, right? Second verse is Jeremiah 15, verse 15. You know, Lord, remember me and take note of me. Avenge me against my persecutors. In your patience, don't take me away. Know that I suffered this grace for your honor. So the first verse tells us that God's patience can run out. But the second verse tells us that God's patience is is long, right? Like as we read through scripture, as we go through the Bible, we see that the Lord is patient with us. And thank God for that, right? I know personally in my life, God spoke to me and called me to the ministry since I was about 17, 18 years old. And God repeatedly spoke to me and I repeatedly said no. And God called me again and I was like, I'm gonna go that way, God, because I, I, that's, I don't want that, right? And there was fear and there were, there were other things, other reasons why I was like, no, I, I don't want to be a pastor. I don't want to go into the ministry. And I repeatedly disobeyed God. And yet the fact that I'm standing up here is nothing but the grace, mercy, and patience of God that God did not give up on me. That is all that it is. And, and thank God for that, that God's patience is long. And, and, and that's how we see Jeremiah uh, relating to God. He's like, the, the reason that he's praying is this, pr this prayer is because he knows. He's like, God, I know that you're a patient God. That's why I can pray this prayer. I know. I'm like, God, in your patience, have mercy on me. In your patience, work in my life, Lord. So because Jeremiah knew God, he knew that God's patience was long and active for him. The third verse, Romans 2 verse 4. So now we get to the New Testament. And it says, or do you despise the riches of his kindness, restraint, and patience, not recognizing that God's kindness is intended to lead you to, does anybody know? Repentance, right? So now we see that there is purpose in God's patience, right? There, 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 there is purpose to why God is patient with us. And it's not because God is just chill, and laid back, and he's like, you know, <laughs> Colleen, you do you, you know, as long as it takes you, it's fine, don't worry about it. Um, it's not that there isn't urgency, like in the calling of God, right? There, there are wasted years in my life where I could have been serving the Lord, where I was in, was, where, where I was living in disobedience, and maybe that's, maybe that's true for you. Maybe God is speaking to you, and, and so far, You've been disobeying. You've been running away from God. You've been saying no. You've been compromising. Whatever you've been doing. Um, and we're benefiting and, and in a way taking advantage of God's patience. You know, because we're like, God's still going to forgive me, right? God's still going to be good. But the reason that God is patient is not because he's chill. It's because he's giving us time to repent, right? That is the soul purpose of God's patience. In fact, what God's patience does is hold back his wrath from being poured out. Because what we're doing when we're disobeying God is we're sinning, right? We're sinning. This world is a world that is full of sin. So because God is a just God, he needs to deal with sin. He needs to punish sin. He needs to pour wrath out over sin. And the only thing holding back his wrath is God's patience. And the reason why he's doing that is because he's giving you time like he's giving me time to repent. Uh, Romans 9.22, it says, And what if God, wanting to display his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much patience objects of wrath prepared for destruction? He's talking about objects of wrath prepared for destruction. And here's the thing. God is patient with both the good and the evil, Right? God is, it's not like, like I'm, I'm a little bit better than you, so God is going to be a little bit more patient with me, right? Or you're a little bit better than me, so God, because of your goodness, is extra good to you, and he's showing you patience. No, God is good with both the good and the evil, and he's giving us, um, he's giving us time to repent and to be saved. Um, so for the people who are good, um, but like we're good, saved, but we're, you know, sometimes living in sin or sometimes falling into sin or sometimes making mistakes like we all do.
God doesn't pour out his wrath. God doesn't punish us, but he gives us time to realize that we're wrong, to repent of our sin, and to come back to him. But on the flip side, God's patience for a lot of people, all it does, like for Pharaoh, it gives them time to store up wrath, right? God doesn't immediately judge their sin. So if, 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 if I sinned and God intervened there and then in that moment, right? A lot of, a lot of times we're like, oh God, like, please don't, don't judge me. Don't like, don't, you know, don't catch me in my sin. Don't, what, you know, we, we don't want to suffer the embarrassment. We don't want to suffer the, the people pointing fingers at us because we've been, because we've been caught red-handed because now like people know that we're, 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 we're sinners like, we're, we're happy when, when God kind of covers up our, our sin or God is patient and doesn't immediately judge us, right? But that's not necessarily a blessing, right? Because if we were caught in the moment, we would be forced to deal with our sin. And for many of us, being forced to deal with it would end in repentance. We're, we're like, just like David when he was confronted by Nathan, right? He slept with Bathsheba. Uh, with Bathsheba he killed her husband, and he was trying to live as if nothing, nothing had happened. And Nathan comes up to him, and he, he gives him that story about, you know, a poor man with, a, with one sheep, and then this rich man with a lot of sheep takes his, takes his one and only sheep. And, and David is so infuriated, and he says, that man should be killed, you know? And Nathan says, you're that man. You're the man. Confronted him with his sin, and, and David was forced to fall on his face and weep and repent and the fact that God judges us is, is, is grace. The fact that God forces us to deal with our sin is mercy, right? It's not God being bad. It's not God being evil. It's God being kind to us. When God doesn't deal with our sin, we're in dangerous territory. Because we can continue living in that sin, thinking that we're okay, living in confusion, living in self-deception, and storing up wrath for ourselves. Um, two, more, two more verses as it relates to God. First Timothy chapter 1, verse 16. But I received mercy for this reason, so that in time the worst of them, I'm sorry, so that in me, the worst of them, Christ Jesus might demonstrate his extraordinary patience as an example, listen to this, as an, as an example to those who would believe in him for eternal life. So, God is patient with you so that others might come to faith. Did you, ever, did you ever think about that? Like, God is patient with you because when others look at you and see the way that God deals with you, they might come to faith in, in, in Jesus as well. Or the other thing is God is patient with you because of other people, right? Because of other people. We... We benefit because of the work that God is doing in, in, in other people. Because God wants to show you mercy so that your neighbor can see his mercy and come to faith. And that speaks to me about the importance of community. That, that speaks to me about the importance of, of church, of what we do here. The reason why we meet together on, on Wednesday nights and on Sundays. And we do Bible study and we do worship together. And we have friend groups where we can see God working in our friends and in the people that we, you know, in, in our brothers and sisters in, in our church family, and that inspires faith in, 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 in us, or the way that God is working in us inspires faith in them. So the benefit is not just for us. It's not just an individual thing, but it's communal. It's God working in us as a community. And the last one is Second uh, Peter 3.15. Also... Regarding the patience of our Lord, uh, regard the patience of our Lord as salvation, just as our dear brother Paul has written to you according to his wisdom, to the wisdom given to him. So the purpose of God's patience is our salvation. And to that I say, thank you, God. Amen. Thank you, God, for the patience that you've shown me. Thank you, God, for the patience that you've shown every single person here in this room. If we're honest, we can all admit that God has been patient with us, right? God has been patient with us. Yeah, Kim.
Absolutely. I love that. Just the fact that, um, like, my obedience can have, like, for you, isn't that crazy? Or, like, your obedience can have for me. Yeah. But then also the flip side, too, right? Like, the effect that my disobedience like, can have on you guys, right? Um, like, we think, man, I sinned, and it affects me, and, like, I have to deal with this. But there are ra- ramifications that are far larger than just our own person. Like, oftentimes, sin affects, like, my family, right? It affects you guys. It affects the church. So... I think we have to get out of our like individualistic like mentality sometimes and realize that God created us to live in community. God created us to live in these kinds of relationships where our actions have an impact, have ramifications to the people around us. Okay? Thank you, Kim, for that. Okay, now we're we're going to the second section where it's not talking about God specifically, but it's talking about us and our character, and how patience needs to look, what it needs to look like in us, in our lives. Uh, it starts with Proverbs 16.32, which is the first place that I, that I saw, that I found, that speaks about patience in, in the Bible. And by the way, if there are any texts that speak about patience that I miss, that you want to bring up, please do so. Patience is better than power and controlling one's emotions than capturing a city. So it got me thinking, it's interesting that, that patience is not weakness. And I think we might be tempted to look at it as, as, as weakness. Because, right, like when, when somebody gets in somebody's face, right, like you've seen it, right, and, and like the, the other person reacts, right? And he doesn't back down, right? Like you say, well, well that guy's a tough guy, right? Like he's not, he's not weak, he's not backing down. He's, he's not letting this other guy get in his face and, and, and do whatever. Um, and I think we, we think about patience or we would be tempted to look at patience that way too. Like it's, it's weakness. Like why didn't you react? Why didn't you do something? Why didn't you answer? Why didn't you speak up? Why didn't you... And the Word of God says that patience is, is better than power, because, especially because when we try to take vengeance, for example, into our own hands, man, the damage that we could do is insane, right? We could do damage to the person that's hurting us, a person that maybe God is working on, God is, God is you know, uh, doing stuff in their life that we're now undoing, especially if they know that we're that we're Christian, that we're believers, and we're, we're, we, we, don't, we don't take control over, over our emotions, but we let our emotions take control over us, right? Instead of saying, Lord, I know that I was hurt. I know that this person is in the wrong. I know that this person is, is you know, actively doing things to, to hurt me. But Lord, I'm not going to react. I'm not going to let my emotions take control over me, over this situation. I'm going to leave it in your hands. And Lord, you deal with it at the proper time, in the proper way, right? Patience is not weakness. Um, and it's, in fact, it's the weak that give in to their emotions, but the strong, they're able to control them. Proverbs 19.11 says, a person's insight gives him patience, and his virtue is to overlook an offense. And it kind of ties into to the previous verse, but it says that patience Actually, being able to have patience, the ability to, to display, to show patience, comes from, from insight. And insight means a deep understanding of a person, of a situation. It's, 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 it's not like a surface kind of understanding or like a surface kind of treatment of whatever you're, you're dealing with, right? So a lot of times it's really easy to think that somebody is evil or dumb, <laughs> or not worth it, or insane, right? Like, they say something, they do something, and, they're, and you're just like, you're nuts, man. Like, what, what, is, what is wrong with you? And it's easy to judge. But I think, like, if you understand where that person is coming from, 
like if you actually try to step into their shoes, a lot of times that thing that he said like makes a lot more sense, right? Or the way he reacted makes a lot more sense. Like you start thinking like, man, if I was in their shoes, I probably would have done the same thing. If I was, if I was going through that, I probably would have reacted the same way or, or in a similar way, right? And all of a sudden, like you're not passing judgment on the person. You're not calling them dumb. You're not calling them stupid. You're not, you know, just automatically writing them off as evil. You understand, like there's, there's insight. And the insight allows you to have patience with the situation, right? Again, instead of reacting, you're like, man, th- this, he must be going through something. Like bullies, right? Bullies at school. Um, like all you want to do is just like beat them back, right? Like if you, if you get bullied or if somebody like, you know, I don't know, is just mean, messed up, whatever, you just want to like return that. Um, but a lot of times the bullies are being bullied at home, right? A lot of times the bullies are being abused by other people that are, that are stronger, more powerful than them. And that's why they do what they do. Um, Proverbs 25, verse 15. A ruler can be persuaded through patience, and a gentle tongue can break a bone. Um, I, I heard a pastor say once that, like, when, when people come to him and they, they say, like, hey, um, I think we should have this ministry at our church, or I think we should start this group, or, or, or we should do this, or a lot of times, like, he won't, really do anything about that suggestion uh not because he's trying to be a jerk but because like he knows a lot of people have like they get they get amped up about like they get an idea and they get super amped up super excited about it but they're not really committed to the idea right and in the end they won't really follow through and so he waits what he does is he waits to see if this person will come up to him again like a second or a third time if, if this is something that they insist on because if it is like if they don't give up on the idea of seeing the idea being put into practice then he knows that they're truly committed truly dedicated to seeing this through and i think that's what a lot of us need we need that kind of fortitude that kind of strength that kind of commitment that kind of patience to see something happen uh romans 8 25 we're in the new testament now Now, if we hope for what we do not see, we eagerly wait for it with patience. And like in our Christian walk, a lot of times we have we have to hope for for things that we don't see right away. Right. Like that's just a reality of of being a Christian. Like we see somebody that's sick and and we pray for their healing. Right. And, And it doesn't always happen right away. Like it doesn't always happen at the end of our prayer. Right. Um, we're taught that God is good. We're taught that God is loving, that he's kind. But the reality is that sometimes it takes weeks, right? Sometimes it takes months. Sometimes it even takes years to see the results of that prayer or of that hope. Like you look back years later, months later, weeks later, and you're like, I, I see what God was doing in that situation. I I understand why he didn't answer like at that moment. It makes sense. And I see the goodness of God in that situation. And I see that it was better that he didn't answer right away or that he didn't give me what I asked him for. I see God's goodness. I see God's wisdom. But it takes patience. And a lot of Christians give up way before you get to that point where you can say, I see now. Why? I see why God did it that way. Galatians 5.22 says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience. Um, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1. Therefore, I, the prisoner of the Lord, urge you to walk worthy of the calling you have received with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, making every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace making every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. So, as Christians, we're called to supernatural patience. So, we are called, this group of people here, 20 plus that we are here, we are called 
to supernatural patience in working for, fighting for, bleeding for, whatever, you know, whatever, like, however serious you, you want me to make this, um, fighting for the unity of the body of Christ. Like, that is a big deal to God. That is a big deal to God. He says, with all humility, uh, gentleness, patience, bearing with one another, another in love, making every effort to keep the unity of the Spirit through the bond of peace. That's not a, that would be nice kind of suggestion, right? God is saying that that's supposed to be our own personal, individual goal, each and every single one of us, to battle for the unity of the body of Christ, to battle for, in prayer, in action, the unity of the church. That is what God wants to see, and that requires patience. Colossians 1.9, this, this one's kind of a long one, so stick with me. For this reason also, since the day we heard of this, we haven't stopped praying for you. We are asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding so that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him. Remember that, fully pleasing to him. Bearing fruit in every good work and growing in the knowledge of God, being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might so that you may have great endurance and patience joyfully giving thanks to the Father who has enabled you to share in the saints' inheritance in the light. So one thing that pleases God, and, and I think, you know, we all want to be pleasing to God, right? We, we, we all want to have a good relationship with God. We all want God to be smiling down on us, to be happy with, with the way that we're living our lives, the way that we're in relationship to each other, the way that we're in relationship to Him. And one of the ways that we can be pleasing to God. One of the ways that we can God, make God smile is by displaying patience and endurance as Christians, by having patience in our lives. That's, you know, when we don't throw tantrums um, every time a prayer wasn't answered, you know, in five minutes, like a lot of Christians do, right? We pray to God, God doesn't answer right away, and we're like, man, you know, forget this. <laughs> God isn't hearing, God isn't listening, you know, why am I even doing this? We throw little tantrums, and I have three little kids that throw tantrums so I know what that's like when they don't get their way when they don't get what they want right away when we don't do the roller coaster right when we don't do the up and down every single day every single week every single month one minute we're up the next minute we're down spiritually emotionally when we're steadfast that's what pleases God when we show patience in our lives with our spiritual life, with each other, and it could go on. Colossians 3, verse 12. Therefore, as God's chosen ones, again, remember that, holy and dearly loved, put on compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and peace. So here is the evidence that you are one of God's chosen ones. Here is evidence, like proof, that you are one of the ones that is, that is saved. A lot, a, lot, a lot of times, you know, people wonder, like, am I even saved? Am I even walking with God? Am I doing things right? Here is evidence that you are one of God's chosen ones. Obviously, faith in Jesus Christ is, is what saves us, right? Faith in Jesus, faith in his, uh, in his work on the cross for us. But here is evidence that you are one of the chosen children of God. Um, patience, right? It says, as God's chosen ones... Put on these things, among which is compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, other things, but patience is one of them. But the thing is, it doesn't, it doesn't happen automatically, right? Patience doesn't happen. It's not like it's, it's just you become a Christian and then bam, you flip the switch and you're on, uh, on autopilot. You just, patience just comes naturally to you. It's just something that just, it, it's just there. You can deal with life and the world and school and friends and siblings and parents and all that stuff like autumn. It doesn't happen. We have to be as intentional about patience, about having patience, about displaying patience, as we are about putting on clothes. That's why he says, put on compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Put on, as if you were putting on a shirt or a garment. 
your pants in the morning. I don't know what, what's been up with me lately, but maybe I'm tired. Maybe I'm just getting old, absent-minded. I don't know what it is, but uh, last Saturday or two Saturdays ago, I, I decided to go get like, uh, like a, a sandwich at a restaurant. I was hungry. What kind? Where? Uh, like it was one of those donor places. Like you guys like the little donor shawarma? Yeah, that kind of stuff. I love that, like tzatziki sauce stuff. So anyway, I go in and like I get my sandwich and, and I go and as I get in the car, as I sit down, I notice that like I was wearing a button up shirt and I noticed that the first two buttons were buttoned and then nothing else was buttoned. <laughs> and I don't know how I didn't like notice as I walked out the house, got in the car, went to the, the guy probably thought like, man, this guy's like a, a bum, like he's like <laughs> some homeless guy, doesn't even know how to dress, whatever. I'm like, what? Is... And then it happened a second time. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what is what was up with me. Start from the bottom. <laughs> um, but yeah, patience. Like we have to be as intentional about being patient. It, it, it's like a garment that we put on in the morning, especially if we know that that's something that we're struggling with. We say, Lord. Like today, by your spirit, Lord, help me to put on patience. Help me to be patient with, with whatever situation I'm, I'm actively dealing with right now or whatever surprises might come my way. Lord, help me to be patient. It's something that I'm struggling with. It's something that I'm, it's an area that I'm weak in. Lord, help me. Give me strength. Be with me in this thing. And then the last one is James chapter 5, verse 10. Brothers and sisters, Take the prophets who spoke in the Lord's name as an example of suffering and patience. So if you need inspiration and understanding, look at the lives of the saints, right? Look at the lives of the saints in scripture and how they dealt with all the pain and suffering and difficult situations. Or look at men and women of God throughout history or in your life right now. See how they're dealing with with, with situations and how they're displaying patience and learn from them. It's, it's a great thing when we can learn from each other and we don't have to make the mistakes that other people made and paid dearly for to gain that patience. So the last thing is um, a couple of verses that speak about patience and its importance in, in ministry, okay? Um, and all of us are involved or called to be in ministry in one way or another. A lot of you are involved in, in worship, right? Sunday school, other different kinds of ministry. Um, by the way, I loved, worship was awesome tonight. Good job, guys. That was awesome. I loved how old school you guys were. The girls on one side, <laughs> and the guys on the other side. <laughs> that, was, that was really interesting. Um, but here's, but here's, here's what 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse, verse 3 says. Um, we are not giving anyone an occasion for offense so that the ministry will not be blamed. Instead, as God's ministers, it's all of us, we commend ourselves in everything by great endurance, by afflictions, by hardships, by difficulties, by beatings, not giving people beatings, but receiving beatings, by imprisonments, by riots, by labors, by sleepless nights, by times of hunger, by purity, by knowledge, by patience, by kindness, by the Holy Spirit, by sincere love, by the word of truth, by the power of God. So whatever ministry that you're involved in right now, again, whether it's, it's worship or speaking or saying jokes up here or you know, reading verses to inspire us, whatever ministry God's given you, as big or as small as it is, as big or as small as you see it, um, just follow through with it. Follow through with the ministry that God gave you, with the ministry that God trusted you with. Do everything you can, sacrifice everything you need to in order to fulfill the calling of God on your life. And I guarantee you this, again, I ran away from God for, for years, for many, many years. And it was a miserable thing. It was a miserable thing to know that God is calling you and that you're actively living in rebellion against them. 
It's a, it, it, it taints everything that you do. So what I want to say is listen to the voice of God as he speaks to you. And especially if you've already accepted and committed yourself to a ministry, follow through. What Paul said is, is absolutely amazing. Um, he said by, by afflictions, by hardships, by difficulties, we, we got beat up. We were thrown in prison. Um, people rioted because of us. Like, like it was not easy for us to preach the word of God. But it didn't matter what was happening around us, in us, to us. We knew that God called us to this ministry, so we followed through. There is a totality in, in, in our dedication. And that means needing to have patience, you know, in many places in our lives, in many areas of our lives. Because being in ministry, again, I'm not talking about pastors. Being in ministry is something that all of us are in can get difficult, can get discouraging. Um, sometimes there are long periods where you don't see fruit. There are long periods of time where, where nobody's receiving, nobody's responding. And you question, why, God? Am I in the right place, God? Am I doing the right thing? Did I hear you right, God? And it requires patience. 2 Timothy 3, verse 10, uh, just two more verses and then we're done. But you have followed my teaching, conduct, purpose, faith, patience, love, and endurance. Um, and again, choosing role models is important. Um, people to look up to. It's a very powerful thing. I encourage you to find people in your life. Now, people will fail you, obviously. Nobody is perfect, right? But even Paul said, imitate me as I imitate Christ, right? Follow me as I follow Christ. I'm striving to give to you, to leave to you an example of what it means to be a faithful man, a faithful man in ministry, willing to endure whatever it takes so that, you know, whatever God called me to, I take it to, to, to fruition. So you can look in Scripture and find role models in Scripture, in, in David, in Esther, in, in so, many, so many of these amazing stories that we've all grown up with. And we can look around us. Sometimes it's not even somebody that's, that's necessarily older than you. But people here, people that you see that show up week after week, month after month, year after year, they're not rattled. You know, people, people don't always treat them right. But, but they always, always respond with kindness. They always respond with love. And you're like, how do you do that? How do you manage to, 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 to be that loving and that kind and that patient? Talk to them. Learn from them. It's a powerful tool. And then the last verse uh, that speaks about how patience relates to us in ministry is 2 Timothy verse, uh, chapter 4, verse 2. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and teaching. So again, never give up on what God called you to do. Um, sometimes success comes right away. Sometimes, like you, you, you set up a you set up a ministry and bam, it just it just explodes, right? It just explodes. You you see results. There's impact. People flock to you. People flock to the ministry, and it's a beautiful thing, and God can and God does work that way. But other times, you could be in it for the long haul. It could be years, like I said. It could be decades even. Sometimes you have to repeat yourself a thousand times, right? Sometimes you have to forgive somebody 70 times 7, right? They sin against you, and they sin against you, and they sin against you again. And what the Lord calls us to is just to forgive and to forgive and to forgive over and over again and show grace and show mercy and show patience. Sometimes you have to fail Sometimes you have to fail repeatedly in order to reap the rewards of victory in the end. Because if we're patient, 
and we're faithful to the calling that God placed on our lives, the calling that God placed on your life, in your heart, if you're faithful to that, if you don't stray from that, if you don't get distracted by other things and just stick to what God, God called you to do, you will have victory in the end. And what it takes is patience. And God help us with that. Amen? Amen. God bless you guys.